Edwin and his family enjoy life on their farm. With its tropical climate, free-flowing spring water and rich soil, this seems like farming heaven. But only if you can forget for a moment that beyond this ridge is the Philippines' most active volcano, Mount Mayon. Although this area is classified by authorities as a permanent danger zone, Edwin and his family continue to live here. Sometimes some people say the Mayon is danger zone, but for us, Mayon is uh, resources. It's part of our life. The farm is very fertile, the land is very good to crops and animals. Smouldering and sizzling on the Pacific Ring of Fire, the Philippines has 24 active volcanoes. And this is the most active and most lethal of them all. Rising two and a half kilometers into the sky, Mount Mayon is widely regarded as the world's most perfectly shaped volcano. Mayon's name comes from the legend of a beautiful princess whose romance was thwarted, so she's prone to bouts of anger. Thousands of Mayon subjects live in Bunga, just six kilometers away from her volcanic majesty. They must all watch their ruler very closely, on alert for any signs of displeasure that might lead to deadly tantrums. Since records began in the 17th century, Mayon has erupted no less than 50 times. As a residence in six kilometers danger zone in Port of Mayon, since birth I am already here. I've been in farming for 20 years. My mother, my grandmother are farmers. Would you move to farm somewhere else if you had a choice, somewhere safer? If the farm na pagda o ka lupa na pagdadalan sa amin, the same as na nandito sa Mayon, pwede siguro kung papaalisin kami rito na mayroon din kaming pagtataniman na magandang lupa sa kayong continuous supply ng tubig, ah, siguro pwede kaming mag-evacuate permanente kung paaalisin ang government. Pero sa ngayon, kung wala namang mapaglilipatan na ganitong klase mga lupa na napakaganda, mahirapan siguro kami umalis. I'm standing just on the boundary of the permanent danger zone, six kilometers away from Mount Mayon. The volcano looks more alluring than lethal in this peaceful evening light. But scientists here say Mayon's current condition is actually abnormal, so they've raised a level one alert. But even without any such official alert, experts warn of Mayon's perennial life-threatening dangers, such as avalanches, sudden ash explosions, and steam-driven eruptions. For 20 years now, this scientist has been watching Mayon more closely than anyone. We monitor Mayon Volcano closely because there are a lot of people living at the base or around Mayon Volcano. And uh, the people would be at in danger if there would be a sudden phreatic eruptions. Mayon's behavior is also examined by the government scientists in Manila. A steam-driven eruption is really a problem. And that is why we have the permanent danger zone, actually. Mayon is known for having very explosive eruptions that can propel very dangerous volcanic hazards called pyroclastic flows very far down the volcanic slopes. That the six kilometers is at least a minimum distance for safety. Pyroclastic flows is the one that killed people along the way. It might be beyond 300 degrees Celsius or higher. And how fast is it moving? It can go as fast as 60 to 100 kilometers per hour. There used to be a town here called Kagsawa, about 10 kilometers away from Mayon. But on the 1st of February 1814, its entire population was buried following the volcano's most lethal eruption to date. Hot rocks, gas, ash, and water hurtle down Mayon steep slopes like a heated wall of wet concrete. More than 1,200 people were killed, and this church is the only building that was not completely buried. Olivia enjoys living in Bunga, except when Mayon explodes. Of the many eruptions she's seen, 1984 was the most frightening. Grabe to ang ano nangyari diyan kang Mayon, pataas, parang nag-iikot-ikot so uh, lava. Takbuhan baga ang mga tao doon kami oh, na wala nang anuan niya ng ano, takbo ng gamit, iwan ng gamit, basta tao lang ang tumatakbo. Tapos sa ano? Tapos doon sa ano, evacuation. Araw, kasi kung gabi yun, maraming na namatay pa o oh, nasaktan. Growing crops is easier in Mayan soil. It's so rich and fertile. They also get plenty of rain. As government-owned land, it's also free to plant here. But this is a very risky bargain indeed, and many farmers have paid the highest price of all for the fruits of their labour. 
1993, a completely unexpected eruption killed 77 farmers. So while these guys might be volcano wise, no one can predict Mayon's volatility. Now the leader of Bunga's community, 37-year-old Michael, was just a lad when he first saw the might of Mayon. I was scared in 1993. It was a big deal when it was I'm afraid because I think the people of Bunga is not prepared to what to do during the big eruption. In 2013, yet another eruption killed four European mountaineers and their Filipino guide. The climbers were clients of Martin Kaleya, owner of an adventure tourism business, and the guide was his employee. They knew that it was, it was risky climbing, but they never knew that it can happen any time, any moment. Kenneth was also one of Martin's guides in that disastrous expedition. Hit by hot rocks and badly burned on his back and leg, Kenneth was lucky to survive. So very bad. Uh, yung kaibigan namin na fellow, my fellow, fellow guide na wag na lang ituloy pa sa amin kasi so very fag. Tapos yun, pagbaba namin, may narinig ako na ano, na boulder, uh, trembling stone, ganyan. May masyadong malakas. Kaso hindi namin makita kung saan galing. Authorities say it's difficult to prevent people from entering the permanent danger zone. And even when scientists forecast an eruption, it's hard convincing residents to leave. In 2014, volcanologists predicted a dangerous eruption. The provincial government tried to evacuate everyone from the permanent danger zone, including the people of Bunga, but they refused to leave. Maybe magnanakaw ng mga halaman, yung crops. Mga yung baboy, yung mga manok, at saka yung mga, pag umalis kami rito, baka mamaya mawala. They hide inside their houses, they close their houses, they close their windows. Then they don't, even the uh, armies, uh, the armies and the police are calling for, for evacuation, they don't make a sound. So, to them, uh, no one is in the house. Predicting eruptions is hardly an exact science. If you look at the activities of Mayan volcano, Sometimes one year, sometimes three years, six years, have no definite interval. So as long as there would be pressure beneath my own, it would erupt. Behavior differs for every, for every eruption in my own, and we have to have all sorts of data to look at, and we have to make our best uh, inferences as to what the volcano is going to do next. So this is quite a challenge for, for my own prediction of Steam-driven eruption is one of the frontiers. Um, until now, we are not able to predict this. As the eruption predicted by experts in 2014 did not in fact happen, people lost confidence in the scientists. Their projection na magkakaroon ng explosion. So maraming nag-alisan hanggang naghintay ng matagal na disturb karamihan yung livelihood nila. Iniwanan yung mga tanim dahil magpuputok raw. Wala namang nangyari. Siyempre, maraming tao na nagsasabi na hindi naman nangyari. O, di, parang kumunti yung trust. Nabawasan ng konti siguro yung trust namin sa Facebook. Kahihintay, kahihintay. Hanggang wala namang dumating na talagang big explosion. Ay masakit. Nung hindi sila nagbigay ng warning, mayroong pumutok yung manon. Mayroon, nandun pala yung ibang mga foreigner, di ba, may namatay. So yun ang masakit. Hindi nila yun na, na project. But anyway, Hit in me siguro naman yun. Uh, dahil nature siya eh, walang nakakaalam. Yes, that's the most difficult part. When we are being questioned at every, at every, uh, on every step of the way, we're being questioned as to our interpretation and our methodologies and the advice that we give and we are being, cha being challenged. Distrusting scientific projections, many residents prefer to rely on their own ways of predicting an eruption. They are waiting for signs like shaking of the grounds and snakes coming down from the summit. Another one is this, the presence of this hermit. They say that it only appears during eruption. So even if PBOX says they have to evacuate, but if the signs are not really evident, then 
you will find it hard to make these people leave Balangay Bunga. Without any obvious signs of eruption, life inside the permanent danger zone goes on. And many tourists are also drawn to this place of peril. This could be the quickest way to explore a highly active volcano without lingering too long. This is fast and fun, as long as your wheels keep turning. The adventure tourism business here has continued to flourish despite those five deaths caused by Mayon's eruption in 2013. Very erratic, volatile situation of Mount Mayon gives it the premium for adventurers. They seek for it. We had a lot of calls coming from adventurers wanting to climb Mount Mayon again just to you know get the, the thrill that any time they can they can die in that in that adventure, yeah. Maybe that's part of the rush. That life is so fragile, yeah? and yet you, you're tempting on it. And once you survive, you say yes. You cheated death. <laughs> Mayon's ever-changing moods may often be monstrous, yet she also has a generous soul, providing ideal farming conditions. We continue farming. We continue growing crops because the, this area, the soil. The atmosphere, the environment is very conducive for farming. And the busy volcano also bestows bounties perfect for construction. High quality sand coming from my volcano. Gravel also coming from my volcano, first class. But Mayon's appeal isn't just economic. People living here enjoy Mayon's thrilling beauty. They also feel protected by their faith and reassured by a special community spirit. Basically, their livelihood is here, and they grew up from this place, and who wants to be taken away from things that you love most? Scientists and officials may urge everyone to leave the permanent danger zone. But perhaps following deeper instincts, these resilient residents prefer to believe they found their permanent comfort zone. For Assignment Asia, this is Steve Lunt in Albay Province, the Philippines.